guys, Jay here. Welcome to Models Memories Weekly, episode 110. Models Memories is a show about nothing and it is filmed in front of a live studio audience. This is a show where I talk about my painting, modeling, and working experiences from the week. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Jay, you put out three YouTube videos a week. Wow. Could I possibly have more to say? Well, I do. And here goes. This week, Other Games April is coming to a close. Games Workshop is doing something with Kill Team, and they showed off a whole bunch of new Tyranids. But first, you've probably noticed this awesome t-shirt I'm wearing. It's a little astronaut. And this shirt was created by today's sponsor, Into the AM. Into the AM has a large collection of original art, like this shirt I'm wearing, The Lunar Harvest. I also have this hoodie called Bourbon Voyage, kind of a play on Bon Voyage. All these designs are printed onto soft poly cotton material t-shirts and hoodies, and they're super comfortable. All their artwork is stellar, and I've been wearing these all the time, and I've gotten a lot of compliments. My mom complimented this shirt. We were getting Mexican food, and it's not important, but this shirt is mom approved, so you know it's a banger. They have tons of awesome designs featuring sci-fi, synthwave, nature, and lots, lots more. I saw a ton of wargamers at Adepticon wearing Into the AM shirts, so you know they are wargaming ready. The artists and creators over at Into the AM are running a bundle deal right now, three graphic tees for $60, and as if that wasn't enough, you can use our link below to get an additional 10% off that. I like these tees a lot. I feel just a little extra nerdy while I'm wearing them, and that makes all the difference. Other Games April is coming to a close. It's the end of an era. Actually, it's the end of a month, but it was really fun. A little bit of behind the scenes, but actually we started Other Games April in February because it takes a long time to do anything miniature related, but it was really good. It was really fun and we got tons of stuff done for other games, which is great. We play games every single weekend with our friends and usually 40k, like Games Workshop games are really, really solid war games. Like take the whole day war games. You really need to be super invested, but a lot of these other games particularly like Relic Blade, uh, Mantic's Armada, not to be confused with Star Wars Armada, which is the uh, the big ship game, which I've always been interested in, but it's really, really expensive, and I already love X-Wing, so I feel like I don't need to spend more money just to play with smaller big ships than the small ships that are also still huge, because like some of them are like the Ghost and the Millennium Falcon, which are it's complete tangent, but all of these other games are actually filling a really nice niche for us, which is... They're a little bit easier to just sit down and play with, and so we can actually get more wargaming into our game nights. Although we still do enjoy a good a good board game and a good card game. Cockroach poker. Oh, we go so hard on exploding kittens. It gets wild. <laughs> when it gets down to the wire and you're just, you know that there's those bombs, the exploding kittens are right there, and you're you're playing diffuses and berry cards. It's if you have a game night, you got to you got to maybe open and close the exploding kittens just to get get yourself rolling, get to that really competitive level where you just want to see your friends die. <laughs> it is absolutely wonderful. But Games Workshop has shown off some stuff for Kill Team, sort of actually. They have teased that they will show off stuff for Kill Team, and it's a little bit confusing, but it's got me a little bit excited. On Sunday, they came out with an article showing off all of the, the lore and the story of what's been going on in this season on this season of Kill Team, which is, of course, taking place on the Gallo Dark, this giant space hulk. We got the first box into the dark, Crute Mercenaries versus the Imperial Navy Breachers, A plus, 10 out of 10 box, really, really cool. Nick's still working on the Crute a year later. It's great. The next box, Shadow Vault, Kazrakin versus Necrons. Eh. I like the Kazrakin, they're pretty neat. They just got a, a huge buff recently that makes them actually really good because when they dropped, they were actually really underpowered and probably not as good as the Tempesta Scions from the original compendium. Soul Shackle was the third box. Arbites versus Drukhari. Pretty cool box. I really like the Arbites. Perhaps I'm even working on a video about uh, the 40k police and it's looking really cool. And then the new box, which you can't actually get yet, the Gallo Fall, Squats versus Chaos Beastmen. Even though I don't really like the Beastmen, actually I talked about it in another Models of Memories, and a friend of mine texted me and he was really mad at me that I said the Beastmen were lame because he really likes the Beastmen. But overall, a really, really cool season. And you still, in that Sunday article, they mentioned that the Gallo Fall box is going to be coming to pre-order in about two weeks. And... On Monday, apparently, Games Workshop is going to be showing off Kill Team something. 
And I really wonder what they're gonna be showing off because it must be the next season. Which, if Kill Team is gonna evolve similarly to how Games Workshop handles Warcry, it looks like we'll get another season of all the same terrain with new teams every single time. Warcry actually gives you two brand spanking new teams every single time, which is really, really cool. We recently bought, here at Eons of Battle, we recently bought one of the Warcry boxes, the Lizardmen versus the Jade Cultists. We're getting that all built up and it's looking really cool. Where Kill Team typically has one brand new faction or one brand new team and then one pre-existing 40k box that is getting an extra sprue that gives you some, you know, a sniper rifle and a heavy weapon and one guy who's holding a phone. That's usually how it works, which is fine. But I wonder if they're going to be maybe going harder into Kill Team and always coming out with two brand new teams because there's very, very few things left for them to do unless they wanted to redo certain things, which they've only really done for Space Marines. And it's always been a different unit. Like there is the Space Marine Incursors and then you can get Space Marine Intercessors. And then if you go back to the Compendium, you can basically have any of the troop choices for the actual Space Marine faction. So I, I bet they start doing two brand new teams per box because I think that would keep the momentum there. And I'm sure that we're going back to planets. Into the Dark was really cool. Into the, uh, the Gallo Falls Dark Corridors was really, really neat. But we now have four sets of that terrain. Enough for a proper, like, full-size 4x6 40k table. So, no more tight hallways, please, Games Workshop. Get us on a nice, interesting planet. I, w I don't mind all of the terrain being exactly the same. We the, the first season of Kill Team, they were all different, and we didn't do any of it. We made Octaris because the Octaris terrain is phenomenal. Some of the best terrain Games Workshop has ever made. We did not do Chalnath or any of the other ones. We are still sitting in a box. Maybe one day we have so much Games Workshop terrain. Maybe one day we need to do a video where we just have all of it. We'd have to like buy a new table. You have all of it set up on the table and just one day just spray paint it all, dry brush, oil paint, just get it all done, ready to go. But yeah, get us back onto a planet. Hopefully two brand new kill teams in every single box. The only kill, the only 40K factions that Games Workshop hasn't really shown any attention to is Death Guard, Demons, and Tyranids. I'm sure we're gonna get in some Tyranid goodness very soon because 10th edition is coming out soon and it's gonna be all about the Tyranids and the Space Marines. Demons and Death Guard. I'm just kind of surprised that they haven't gotten anything yet. I guess you could say that Beastmen are demon E because they're a chaos faction, but they're not demons. They're not the classic Korn, Slanesh, Nurgle, or Zinch. But if Games Workshop wanted to make me really happy, this new box for the new season of Kill Team is going to be Inquisitor and Retinue versus Demons. That would be a really, really cool, really thematic box. Very 40K, especially if they're kind of revamping 40K and getting everybody really jazzed for 10th edition. Like Chaos versus Demons is the classic war. It's like literally like the background story of what's going on in Warhammer 40K is humanity versus literal evil. I think that that would be a really, really cool box and could actually be good enough that people would be like, ooh, this 40k thing is looking really cool. Ooh, and this is the little version of that, which is just like a little representation of the story going on. I think that would be a really cool, really solid box. What Games Workshop will probably do would, is probably going to be far lamer, and it's probably going to be Gene Stealers, like new Gene Stealers for 10th edition versus, man, if they really wanted to cheap out, have it be Space Marines. There's not a ton of Space Marines left. Maybe they could do Heavy Intercessors because the Heavy Intercessors out of the Compendium are, they must be the worst kill team in all of kill team. There's like 40 factions. If you include all of the Compendium factions, the Heavy Intercessors are the worst team by far. And it'd actually be kind of funny if they revamped them and actually made them good. My idea for the fi finale of Gallo Fall was Blood Angels Assault Terminators versus New Gene Stealers. It would have been glorious. It would have been Space Hulk. Didn't do that. They made it the squats. It's fine. I can live with it, but I'm really interested to see what they will be showing off. I'm sure I'll have some thoughts on that next Models of Memories. But speaking of the Tyranities, Games Workshop has thrown off a lot of Tyranid models. Also, you can see a little bit of like some sneak, sneaky stuff that they put into the trailer for 10th edition, like the new Screamer Killer Carnifex and some weird little tentacly feeder creatures. But they finally showed off some actual miniatures in the Von Ryan's Leapers, which is a new naming convention, apparently where 
they're they're going to be named a little bit like we name animals in real life where like the person who discovered them i guess von ryan is a planet it's not necessarily a person but it kind of goes along with like the real life naming conventions of things and I thought that these are great. I love lictors. I think that they're super, super cool. However, these are not lictors. They are leapers. They're Von Ryan's leapers, which means that these are, in a sense, Primaris lictors. Because <laughs> apparently, lick the classic old fine cast used to be made of metal lictors, which I love, they're great, are sticking around. They're not going anywhere, but these are an entirely new, identical thing that's probably just a little bit taller, called Von Ryan's Lictors. And it's weird. I love the models. I think that they look really, really good. They're kind of velociraptory. They look very mean. And I also really like how the poses make their mantis arms make sense. Like they fold up almost flat and then they just launch out. Like if you remember some of the old Bionicles, remember the old Bionicles dudes, the little balls where you squeeze their back and then their head would just go and you're supposed to try to like knock off the Toa masks. They kind of remind me of that. Like, it's a very mechanical, real flesh and blood arm. It's a really, really cool miniature. I like these a lot. And they're the lictors. They're new lictors. That's exactly what they are. Apparently they're not, they're leapers, but I don't know, it's very odd. I could see maybe the classic lictor becoming death leaper and they just, although death leaper looks cooler than lictors. I mean, it's just a level up lictor. It's a really, it's a really interesting thing. I wonder if we are going to see kind of a primarification of some of the units for the Tyranid army, which the Tyranid army is actually fairly small. They haven't gotten a lot of attention in a very, very long time. I think 2016 was the last time they got a major update. Um, early on in, was it eighth or ninth edition? I think it was in ninth edition, they got the Parasite of Mortrex, which is one, which is a cool model, but it's just one little 40 millimeter base dude that has some really, really fun flavorful rules that aren't necessarily super competitive. It doesn't really change up gameplay or how people construct their armies, where this see, it seems to be gearing up for a full range refresh of the Tyranids. It's not a full range refresh, but a refreshing of everything that needs it. And probably a lot of new miniatures, probably like these leapers, which is, I don't get their place in the army, but for sure, I think the only models that really, really need some stuff is the Tyranifex, not the Tyranifex, the, the Pyrovore and Biovore, which is a double kit if I've ever heard of one. The kind of flamethrower unit and the launches Mycetic Spore Mines unit. Just throw those suckers into one beautiful new miniature with a, a just an alternate gun that you can glue on the top. And holy moly, the Gene Stealers. They're so old. They're like 20 years old, Games Workshop. I know for a fact on your computers, there's beautiful STLs ready to rock and roll for Gene Stealers. It's gonna happen. I'm super ready for it. I already own so many Gene Stealers, so I don't know if I'll buy that many more. Although if I start a Tyranid army, which it's kind of looking like I am going to, because I really like, I, I like the Tyranid a lot. They're really, really cool. And if I can get them really cheap, like if I maybe if I buy a couple of launch boxes and then what happened in, when uh, Indominus came out was the market got absolutely flooded with Space Marines and Necrons. And so those armies were really, really easy to put together. And so if Gene, if uh, Tyranids become really, really cheap to put together, I think I would start a Tyranid army. And then of course I'm gonna need new Gene Stealers because I can't just use, those Gene Stealers are earmarked for my Gene Stealer Cults army. So I'm gonna need different Gene Stealers for my Tyranids army, obviously. So I might have to get some brand new ones if they do some new sculpts. Ooh, and the um, Raveners, the Tyranid warriors with tails. I would love to see Games Workshop revamp those guys because they're literally just warriors with tails. They're not really their own thing. And I would like to see them get, get revamped, maybe make them into baby Trigons and just give them like a different kind of morphology and biology than just literally warriors with tails glued on. Literally, that's it. Everything else in the Gene Stealer range is actually pretty pretty slick and fairly modern looking. If they wanted to make me happy, maybe redo the Tyranid drop pod thing, the big booger with guns sticking out the sides. It's not an old model. I think that's one of the models that came out in 2016. I just don't like how it looks. I think it looks a little weird and not weird in a good way. Like I, it should look icky and disgusting and goopy and gross, but it just looks like a meatball. It's, I don't know, it doesn't jimmy my jams, it doesn't flim my flams, but 
The Tyranid, I am here for the Tyranid getting a revamp. And actually, Games Workshop showed off another Tyranid miniature. The Hive Mind unleashes death from above with the winged Tyranid Prime. I have a suspicion that this model actually looks way better than it does in this picture. It looks fine. And I think that they made some clever design decisions, like having its wings all curled up. Because if the wings were open, then it would just be a swarm lord or a hive tyrant with wings. And it wouldn't, it would just wouldn't look different enough. But this model, I think, I like this model a lot. And I think it has some interesting kind of clues of what's to come for the Tyranid range. But this guy is great. I really like his big smokestacks. I like his big sword head. I love a good sword head. The Tyranid are, have a lot of that going on. One of my favorite models in all of 40K is the Swarm Lord with his General Grievous four arms holding bone swords. And then he's got a fifth sword in his face. It's just great. I just love like the logic of him. Just just an absolute flurry of swords coming at you of humongous giant swords. And then I just love when on the tabletop when you've got the Swarm Lord versus like Space Marine Captain. And so you've got this model that's like the size of a softball doing battle with a tiny little one inch tall Space Marine. But it works in that Space Marine. He's doing his ninja moves and he's flying around because even though um, typically Space Marines are like animated kind of in slow motion to show their presence and their badassery in the reality of Warhammer 40K, they're really, really fast. They can they can run at like cheetah speeds. They have unbelievably quick reflexes. They're an absolute blur in combat. And I just love imagining moments like that from the universe of the Swarm Lord doing battle with a little Space Marine and his power sword. It's great. But this guy, the Prime, which is actually a thing in, in the Tyranid range, a Prime is just you take your regular warrior out of the warrior box and you glue on a different head and shoulders, not to be confused with the shampoo, but you just glue on those different bits and then it becomes an HQ unit. A pretty cool HQ unit, although, man, that Tyranid Warrior box is really showing its age. I really like them, and I've always wanted, I have some, and I want to buy more so that I can run an oops all Tyranid Warrior list for Kill Team, because it looks like a really fun list, and it looks like something really different than a lot of the teams that I already have. But that box is a little bit of a mess. It's a little bit of a nightmare, because it's three bodies and just a boatload of weapon options. I think there's almost ten weapon options per guy in that box. It's a lot. And you need that box to build a Tyranid Prime, which means that you're not using two of those Tyranid Warriors. I guess you could take a Prime and then you could take, I don't know if you can take a squad of two Warriors, but you can definitely take a squad of five Warriors. So I guess you would do that if you wanted to take a Prime. But I would assume because we're getting the Winged Prime that we're going to get a normal Prime and then it's going to it's going to look awesome. Just, a war, you know, you got your squad of Warriors who will hopefully be getting a refresh. And I assume they would if Gaunts are getting a refresh. I would assume warriors are going to get a refresh and they're going to look absolutely glorious. But you, know, you got your it's, it would be perfect for big bug armies because then you've got your swarm of warriors, which are our troop choice. And then you've got your big, burly, meaty prime just standing right in the middle. Obviously taller because the way that Games Workshop shows off hero units is they just are significantly taller than the other things. That's how you that's how you make a good leader. I love even with the Eldar, they don't they do make them just a little bit bigger, but they always make them leaping off of stuff like really tall things. And so that's how they actually get height, which is silly, but also it works really, really well. I really it tickles my brain in a really nice way when things are really self-evident on the tabletop. And so having your leader just standing a couple of heads taller than everyone else is a really good way of letting everybody know that that is the important guy. And then those are the plebs that are surrounding him. I really like it. It's a really, really good the good way to do game design. But the Winged Prime, I like this model a lot. I think it looks a little bit rough in the photos because he's all kind of bunched together. I bet it's one of those models where when you look at it, it looks pretty darn cool. But when you photograph it, you're just not getting enough information. And so I bet it looks a lot cooler in person. No, uh, no gun options, which is a little bit surprising considering that it is a Tyranid warrior, but like like a Death Spitter or the Venom Cannons would be really, really cool. But maybe it is only for close combat. It's one thing that Games Workshop used to make, actually Forge World used to make. It was called the Shreks, which was a, you replace one of the pairs of arms for the Tyranid Warriors with wings. And it actually looked pretty badass. It used the same sort of wing design that the Harridan uses, which is a little bit more 
bird-like and craggly and scratchy instead of the the bat wings that the gargoyles and all the plastic hits for Games Workshop uses. They were really, really cool. Forge World axed them because I don't know what is the deal with Forge World. It doesn't make any sense. They've recently axed all of the Warhammer Fantasy models, just all completely gone. The only ones that exist now, I think, are the um, the big giant baddies for the demons. And the only reason that those exist is because they can also be taken in Warhammer 40k. So I thought that those models would stay on, especially with Old World coming out supposedly at some point this decade. Supposedly, we're going to get information on that, too. But I even though it is for sure happening, I am still completely unconvinced that Old World will ever come out. And when Old World comes out, are they ever are they going to bring back some of those really cool Forge World miniatures for uh, Warhammer Fantasy Battles? Like, why? Why get rid of those? I'm also really upset because I wanted the Morngull. I wanted the Morngull so bad. It's been in my cart for years. I knew I should have pulled the trigger on it because I just love that weird ghostly Windigo guy. And now I can't buy it unless I want to get a recast or get someone else's miniature on eBay, which I've been keeping my eye out for. And apparently people know what they have because even poorly painted ones are actually going for big money. (sighs) Ah, Forge World. I Forge World. I don't like it. Don't like it at all. Plastic is so much better. Games Workshop big does just such a better job with their miniatures and also forge world does a really bad job they use um 3d printing to prototype their miniatures which is fine that's a good way to do it but just give them a little sand so that i don't see layer lines on my really expensive forge world models it's wild literally somebody could just you could just pay somebody for two hours to just look at this miniature and just go through it with a nail file and just make sure it's all nice and smooth and polished and then give it to the casters to make molds of. I don't understand. The only reason Forge World is the leech on Games Workshop. It's making them worse. Also, Forge World customer service kind of sucks. Games Workshop customer service, perfect. I've kind of, I've carried it up a couple of times with them. They always take care of me. Quick shipping, they, they, they do a good job. Forge World, I don't know. Like things can take a long ass time to ship to you. Yet it's you have to provide a little bit more paperwork of you know it's your receipt and the whoever checked it. You have to find the piece of paper that says this product was reviewed by Mary before it shipped to you. It's I don't like Forge World at all. That's Th- a it's probably a smart business decision to have another company to do odder things with, like you know trying out things, but. The way it is currently, it's just there's Games Workshop and then there's Forge World, which is worse Games Workshop. That's also twice the price. I don't get it. (laughs) But yeah, they used to sell a model called Tyranid Shrikes, which were really, really cool. Tyranid Warriors with Wings, which is what this guy is meant to be flanked by. But currently you can't take that. And I know that in, in the move from 7th to 8th edition, there was a culling of units that didn't have rules for it, like didn't have miniatures that existed. And I would assume from the move to 9th, 10th edition, we're also going to see a culling of units that don't actually have miniatures to go along with them. But this guy seems to perfectly set up the Tyranid Shrikes. So I wonder if when they revamp the Tyranid Warrior box, we're going to see, in addition to all of the standard weapon options, Death Spitter, all of the guns, we're going to see wings in that box as well so that you can turn your Tyranid Warriors into Tyranid Shrikes so that this guy can have his super cool winged bodyguards. I... We, the a flying army for the Tyranids is really, really cool. I've seen a couple of them in person. It's just tons and tons of gargoyles and harpies, flying hive tyrants. And then usually like a Herodin sitting in the back and it's pretty awesome. But having shrikes in there and a dedicated small HQ so you don't have to spend all the points for an actual flying hive tyrant. It's really cool. I love armies. Orcs are like this a lot where you can really, really kind of tech into some really specific builds. You can go big bug, you can go swarm, you can go flying bugs, and it just completely changes the overall feel and look of the army while still being part of that army. You know, orcs, you can also do green tide, buggies and trucks, or super mechanized with their mega knobs and all of their different like bulky units. I don't remember, back in the day, you could take Ard boys, which was just normal orc boys who were wearing better armor and so they got plus one save. Although Orcs just recently got a toughness boost, so I don't know. I think our boy is gone. It'd be cool to see, though. I don't know. Some actual, like, big tough boy. I guess you could just go knob. Just go really knob heavy, although they're an elite choice. Although the army list building, complete tangent. 
Although army list building is kind of going out the window in 10th edition, though it's going to be a different style of list building, which I appreciate because the classic 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th edition army list building was kind of bursting at the seams for different things you could do. 7th edition tried to fix this by having um, detachments where you could buy, you could build specific armies at Games Workshop. That would be a good idea, like tons and tons of um, Necron Destroyers or tons and tons of bikes for the white scars. And then you would get extra rules, but the extra rules are way too good. And then they very quickly just act seventh edition and moved into eighth edition, which was better. But I I really like the tier, the new Tyranid Prime, the Tyranid Winged Prime. And I'm really excited to see what the new Tyranid Prime and the new Tyranid Warriors are gonna look like. I think that it's going to be really, really fun. When, when ninth edition came out, I got to see so many really, really cool Necron armies. And so with 10th edition, I'm really excited to see tons and tons of really cool Tyranid armies, which very similarly to the Necrons are easy and challenging to paint. They're mostly one color with an accent color. And I think that can be, that can mean that the miniatures paint up really, really quickly, but that your color choices are really, really important. I've seen a lot of Necrons that are just kind of dark or too much of one color, not enough of an accent. And the Tyranids are very, very similar. I love High Fleet Behemoth, the red and blue. It's a really, really cool color scheme that I haven't seen done amazingly very often, but it is so odd and interesting. And it looks really, really good if you put them on McCrag bases, which is the Ultramarines homeworld, which is an ice planet. And so you've got that dark, dark, blue and then bright red and then you've got them on a white base with blue tinge it's beautiful but i also really like kraken and leviathan the red and cream and um purple and cream games workshop does i think um kraken for all of their miniatures and it does look really good i am a sucker for the box art color scheme i don't know why i don't know if it's a failure of my creativity but i tend to make things look like the box and I would, I think I would probably go Behemoth, try to make Behemoth look really, really good and be really, really interesting. I don't know, it's interesting. I also though, I always paint my miniatures too dark and I wonder if red and dark blue, if I would end up painting my miniatures too dark. I'll have to play around. Maybe there's, maybe there's a video in, or just a, maybe I should just spend a couple of evenings painting like a dozen Tyranid and all sorts of different color schemes to try to find the one I want. I very rarely paint test models. There, it's a great idea to paint test models to really kind of get your ideas finalized on exactly your order of operation and what you want to do. However, I am impatient. So I usually just go for it and whatever happens, happens. And a lot of the times it works out. And then uh, sometimes, um, a lot of the times it works out. But yeah, the tiered and winged prime, I really, really like it. I love the smokestacks. I really like the wings. I like the, um, the weird, like it's walking on its knuckles, kind of like the um, the real life dinosaurs, the pterodactyls. I guess they weren't actually dinosaurs, right? They were something else. I, I don't know. I remember I remember reading somewhere that the pterodactyls actually weren't dinosaurs. They were technically something else. They were maybe the non seropods were the big ones. Pteropods. Let me know in the comments what the pterodactyls were from history. But I like this model a lot and I'm really, really excited for the Tyranid range refresh. It'll be like 2016 all over again. Although unlike in 2016, because that was back before Games Workshop had a Facebook and YouTube page, things would just happen. You'd just wake up one morning and all of a sudden there would be an entire range of new miniatures and you don't know where they came from. And all of a sudden, boom, chaos, range refresh. It just happened. Now everything is going to be completely unveiled and teased and they're going to, they're, they're, the marketing machine that is Games Workshop will kind of show everything in all of its glory. There was a magic to the old style of, whoa, you never know. But um, I think supposedly it was a holdover from when they when they had the licensing to, which they still do, the licensing to Lord of the Rings. And apparently they had to be very, very strict about what they revealed and how they showed off the Lord of the Rings products. And so that's why they were super, super secretive about everything. Now, I guess since Lord of the Rings isn't as popular, I didn't. I didn't hear great things about Rings of Power, although I don't really like Lord of the Rings that much, so maybe I'd really like Rings of Power. <laughs> I don't mind Lord of the Rings. I don't I don't dislike Lord of the Rings. I've seen the movies many times. I think the extended editions are a little much. I actually like the theatrical cuts. <laughs> 
But um, yeah, it's not 2016 anymore. And speaking of things I really, really enjoy, the Eons of Battle Patreon. Every single month we have a brand new STL terrain pack. This month we have the Twisted Train Station, a devilish depot perfect for skirmish games like Kill Team or Malifaux. Actually, it is your very last opportunity to get that terrain, and I don't want to give too much away, but next month we might have something a little orky in an orky flavor for orcs with a K or a C. We also make one extra episode of Eons of Battle every single week where we take a look at our viewers' miniatures and give us some ideas and critiques of how to improve their painting. We host live Discord hangouts and we have a tier where you can get your name on one of my Black Templar Space Marines. I'm gonna be painting some of those up pretty soon and they can join the Immortal Crusade. I am very excited for what Games Workshop has in store for the Tyranids and for Kill Team. I have absolutely no idea what to expect for Kill Team, but I guess we'll all find out on Monday. In the meantime, I have lots and lots of boats to paint because I have many fleets for Mantic Armada and they need to get painted. Thanks for watching.